Hello all. Suppose an object object is being pulled by a force F bar, as shown by this arrow, and the object is displaced in this direction by this force F bar. This is the direction of displacement. I do not displacement by S bar. The first question that arises is it ever possible that the force act in a particular direction but the displacement occur in some other direction? It is possible. This is possible in a case where the force F bar is not the only force that is acting. Some other forces may also be acting upon an object and the net force is in the direction of the displacement and that's why the displacement takes place in this direction. But for us, one of the several forces is important under certain conditions. So let's talk, talk about this force. The angle between the direction of force and the displacement is theta. And the angle theta is always taken between 180 degree and 0 degree. Now this force remains constant throughout the displacement. Also, the angle between the force and displacement remains constant. We are assuming this. Then, we know that work done by this force is given by the dot product between force vector and displacement vector. Work. We do not work done by W and it is equal to the dot product between the force vector and displacement vector. That is work done is equal to force time displacement times cos theta. This is the work done by a force when it remains constant throughout the displacement, constant magnitude and the fixed direction. However, in general, the force may change in direction or magnitude or both during the displacement. So when force is changing during the displacement, this definition of work cannot be used or this formula for work cannot be used. The reason is when the force is varying, we don't have a unique value of the force to substitute in this formula and obtain the work done. Force is varying, the value of force, magnitude of the force is changing during the displacement. So we have no idea which value of the force should be taken to find the work. In that case, we divide the entire displacement into a very small segments and then proceed to find the work. I am now going to outline the procedure we used to find the work done by a variable force. This formula gives work done by a constant force. Suppose that the object is moving along this path from point A to point B. The direction of displacement at every point on this curve is tangential to this curve. For example, if you consider this point on the curve, then the direction of displacement as it go from this point to a point very close to it. The direction of displacement is close to the direction of tangent drawn at this point. As the particle move, the force acting upon the particle changes in both magnitude and direction. <clears throat> we wish to find the work done by a force as the particle move from point A to point B. Because the magnitude of force is changing, direction of force is also changing, the angle between the force and displacement is also different from one point to the other, we cannot directly use this formula for work which we have shown here. At some time, suppose the particle is at this position. As particle move from this position to some other position and if there is a uh, a large distance between this pi, these two points, 
by large distance i mean the distance large enough that the change in the force as we go from this point to this point uh, the change in force is uh, significant so if change in force is significant as we go from this point to this point then we don't have a unique value of the force to substitute and obtain the work done as the particle move from this point to this point so what we do we consider the displacement so small that during that displacement the change in force both in magnitude and direction is very small almost negligible so when we consider a very small displacement in that small displacement the change in force or variation force because of being very small we can neglect the change in the force and we can and we can take the force to have some constant value and a constant direction this is possible because as we go from one point to the other the force changes continuously the direction and magnitude both of the force changes continuously so when the displacement is very small the change in the force can be so small that we can neglect it and practically we can assume the force to be constant during that small displacement so our procedure involves dividing the entire uh, path into very small segments such that in each of the segment the change in force is very small and hence can be neglected and we can take a constant value of the force for that for those small displacement and calculate separately the work done in each of the displacement and then take the sum of work done for each of the small displacement and we will get the total work so let us consider a small displacement from this uh, from a point say point 1 to a point 2 the displacement is given by a straight line segment connecting the two positions this is the small displacement we do not small displacement by ds and the force during this displacement suppose uh, at the point 1 the direction of the force is as given by this arrow which makes an angle of theta with the displacement ds displacement is a vector quantity so we show a bar upon the symbol now the force f bar may change during the displacement but the change in the force will be so small for a very small displacement that we, we can neglect it then we can take a force to be constant and substitute its value in this formula and obtain the work for this small displacement segment now what value of the force should we take for calculating the work done in this displacement any value of the force during the entire displacement can be taken to calculate the work done for that displacement any value of the force we can assume that value of the force to be constant throughout the displacement so let that value be f bar and we can now write the work done uh, in the displacement ds bar as f bar and ds bar and the dot product between them this gives us the small work done during the small displacement ds bar we do not this work by dw we can repeat this procedure for all the small segments small displacement into which the entire path is divided we divide entire path into small displacement segments like this now if you move to the next segment suppose this is the work done in the first this first small displacement say ds1 bar where the force is f1 bar in the next small displacement we can similarly calculate the work done dw2 but here we have to take a different value of the force suitable to the second displacement we cannot continue taking the same value of the force for the next displacement because the two displacement together in the two displacement together the change in the force uh, will not be uh, very small to treat it to be a constant so in the next displacement we have to consider a new value of the force that is suitable to the second displacement which depends upon uh, the way the force vary in the second displacement 
for example uh, in the first displacement in the first displacement say the force vary in magnitude from uh, 13 newton uh, 13 newton to say 13.01 newton in the first uh, small displacement the force vary from 13 newton to 13.01 newton so we may take any value in this range from 13 newton to 13.0 newton for a force and calculate the work done in the displacement we can take the constant value to be say 13.008 newton which lie in the range from 13 newton to 13.01 newton this value of the force can be taken we can assume the force to have this value throughout the displacement and find the work done dw1 then in the second segment second displacement the force vary from say 13.01 uh, to 13.08 uh, uh, newton now for this range the this value of the force cannot be continued 13.008 the new value of the force that lie within 13.01 to 13.08 range that value of the force will be suitable for this next uh, second displacement so we might choose the force to be 13.05 newton for the second uh, displacement and we take this force value to be constant for the second displacement and can calculate then uh, the work in the second displacement so in each individual displacement we have to take a suitable value of the force to be treated as constant for that displacement and find the work done in that displacement so work done uh, in the second displacement is dw2 f2 bar ds2 we can show this uh, work done dw2 for the second displacement in the figure this is the second displacement and here in the second displacement by the time we reach the second displacement segment the force may have change in direction and magnitude uh, as shown by this arrow this is f1 bar and this is f2 bar and the angle is say theta 2 and here the angle is theta 1 in the second displacement we calculate the work done dw now we move to the third displacement in the third displacement the work done is dw3 equal to f3 bar dot ds2 bar in this way we can calculate the work done in each of all the small displacement so we get the series of work done in various displacements now the total work done in going from the point a to point b is the sum of this small work done in the individual displacement so total work done w is equal to the sum of dw1 plus dw2 dot 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 dwn all the work done in uh, all the small displacement is sum and we get the total work done as particle go from point a to point b on the path as shown so we can further write w is equal to f1 bar ds1 bar plus f2 bar finally we get the total work done but the total work done calculated like this does it really give us the true value of the work done no it is not a true value of the work done because the procedure that we have used still is based upon approximation we take the value of force to be approximately constant during the displacement but in reality the force is changing during the displacement however small displacement it may be the force may change during the displacement but what we have done we have taken the displacement we have divided the entire path into a large number of small displacement the displacement so small that the force may be treated constant 
separately over each of the displacement and then we calculated the work but even this is an approximation force in reality is not constant so the value we have calculated for the total work it is just an approximation to the true work done now this is an approximation how can how can we better our uh, better our approximation to better our approximation and obtain the work done that is still closer to the true value we will have to decrease or shrink the size of this displacement segment the small displacements are also called displacement elements we will have to shrink their size in other words we will have to divide this entire path into a larger still larger number of small displacements small divisions so if we increase the number of division automatically uh, the length of the displacement elements will decrease now how uh, how does it make how does it make possible uh, to approach still closer to the true value of the work when we decrease the displacement say when we decrease the size of displacement or magnitude of displacement if we take even smaller displacement then our approximation that the force remain constant during the displacement is now more effective more reliable greater the displacement less reliable will be the approximation that the force remain constant during the displacement because if the displacement is large enough there will be an appreciable change in the value of force and treating it constant and obtaining or calculating the work uh, will not give us uh, a good approximation to the work so if the smaller uh, the size of the displacement the more effective is the approximation that the force remain constant and closer will be the total work that we calculate to the true work so suppose the total work we have calculated here is w1 for the n number of uh, divisions of the entire path now we increase the number of divisions increasing now we have increased the number of displacement divisions and we can now calculate the total work done for uh, new number of displacement greater number of displacement into we can calculate the work done in a similar way f1 bar ds1 bar plus f2 bar ds into bar and suppose in the first step the number of divisions is n1 in the second case we divided the path into a greater number of divisions n2 and calculated the work w2 now that in the second part we have smaller displacement as compared to those in the first part in the second uh, the work we calculate in the second part can be exp uh, second part can be expected to be closer to the true value of the work now second work done this work done w2 is closer to the true value of work nevertheless it is it may not be exactly the true value of work we can move still closer to the true value of work again by increasing the number of divisions of the entire path and making the individual displacement still smaller in length so again we increase increasing n to n3 and we calculate w3 similarly as uh, the sum f n3 bar and d is n3 bar this process is endless we can go on increasing the number of divisions and shrinking the displacement individual displacement and obtain the total work done that is closer and closer and closer to the true value this is an endless process so this process will generate an infinite sequence of works w1 w2 w3 an infinite sequence of the work w now this is an infinite sequence of the work done and the work calculated in every next step 
will be in general closer to the true value. So this infinite sequence of values of work done will appear to approach certain value but never cross it. That is, this infinite sequence of work value have a certain limit which they cannot cross, which they do not cross. And that limit value may be represented by W. Now W is the smallest limit value which the sequence of work value never cross. That is the, the values of work in this sequence move closer and closer and closer to this value but never cross it. This means that this limit value W must be the true value of the work. Because we know that by decreasing the size of or the length of individual displacements, the work that we calculate go closer and closer to the true value. We have this sequence of work values calculated in this way and this sequence of work values move closer and closer to this limit value. So this limit value W must be the true value of the work. So we write W equal to W1, sorry, we write W equal to the limit value of the sequence W3, sorry, of the sequence Wn as n tends to infinity. Now here n represents the term number in the sequence. We write work done as the sum of work done in small individual displacement. I rewrite the work done f1 bar ds1 bar plus f2 bar ds2 bar going like this till we have fn bar and dsn bar. So this work done is calculated when the total path was divided into n small displacement. We can write w as the sum from i equal to 1 to n of fi bar dot dsi bar. And as we increase the number of divisions, we move closer and closer to the true value of the work. So the true value of the work represents the limit value of this work we calculate as we increase the number of divisions and hence decrease uh, the size of e individual displacement. So as we go on increasing the number of uh, divisions which we represent as n tending to infinity means the number of divisions is increased indefinitely and the size of the individual displacement will decrease indefinitely so it tends to zero. So under this condition the limit value of the work we calculate the limit value of the work we calculate represent the true value of the work. So we can write the true value of work as the limit of this sum i equal to 1 to infinity a phi bar dot dsi bar the limit of this sum as we go on increasing the number of divisions indefinitely and thus decreasing the displacement indefinitely to zero this the limit of this sum is denoted by this symbol a bar dot ds bar as one go from the point a to the point b so this represent this process represent the integration integration of the small work done in individual small displacement a bar dot ds bar so we have a true value of work equal to the integration of the dot product between force and displacement as one go from the point A to point B. I rewrite this formula for the work done when the force vary during the displacement. It is the integration of 4 A bar dot ds bar. 
Now we note the changes. This ds bar, this ds bar represent as small displacement as possible because the integration sign refers to the sum when the number of divisions is infinity and hence the size of division is zero. That is ds is as small as possible and n is as large as possible. So when we go on increasing the number of division and hence uh, decreasing the size of the displacement, we reach the limit of this sum and the limit of this sum actually represent the total work. The limit of this sum under this condition n tend to infinity and delta s tend to 0 is denoted as an integration.